Ever since initially investing in crypto and later becoming a Bitcoiner, I've heard the term apolitical used to describe these digital assets, especially Bitcoin. Let's break down this potential product marketing buzzword, use some rational analogies to test out the term, and figure out why the word is used in the first place. Break through the noise, the fun all around. Stay real with the signal, got 10 toes down. Bitcoin beats, the revolution sound. We dive in the depths where the real is found. The signal stays strong, no lies in sight. We stand it tall, we ready for the fight. Echoes in the dark, we see the clutch unite. Jump that knowledge and we bring the light. One every week, dope rhymes he spit. Feel grind every day with the daily bit. Our features of the week, when memes to hit. Down with the underground, boom, we think he fit. Politicians raging, they can't get It's Sir Ulrich, and are you down with the underground? Narratives encompassing Bitcoin can be confusing. Apolitical is one of them. Apolitical means not interested or involved in politics, and that makes sense to a degree. Because it's not sentient and not an organism, Bitcoin is not interested in anything. But even that goofy story has gathered momentum over time as some podfluencers have claimed that Bitcoin is alive. Everywhere you look, there's someone who wants to redefine what constitutes a living being. But that's a whole nother category of content. As for this topic, being apolitical clearly requires a choice by its definition. Now, on the flip side, the word political pertains to the structures and activities that govern society and influence courses of action by entities in society. So that's interesting because block subsidy schedule, the difficulty adjustment, the roughly 20 something rules that encompass a proper singular transaction. Aren't these structures and activities that influence courses of action and govern the network? Am I missing something here? Now it's also said that Bitcoin is governed by rules, not rulers, but isn't that also a form of politics or governance? Now remember, structures and activities that govern society, well, without a face to represent it is still a form of structures and activities that govern society. In other words, it's actually kind of like a policy or it's political without a politician. But I understand there can only be so much verbal gymnastics to where you finally have to say, okay, Sir Ulrich, if Bitcoin is political, then what are the politics? Well, we can use analogies to common politically embattled topics. So for one, Bitcoin is speech. And we say that because Bitcoin is C++ code and code has clearly been proven to carry all the attributes that are protected under free speech rights in civilized domains. But if you go to uncivilized domains, your liberty to voice your opinion on the conditions of your environment may be curtailed slightly. Curtailed like in France, where Telegram CEO Pavel Durov was arrested for allegedly being complicit with criminal activities and ignoring government demands to censor the platform users, and also from where Rumble CEO Chris Pavlowski fled for threats of a similar fate. Curtailed like in Germany, where podcast hosts Hoss and Hoff are going to be jailed and fined up to a quarter million euros for the act of verbally misgendering a bald transgender person. Curtailed like in the UK where they arrested a 55 year old woman for sharing online what was deemed to be misinformation or that misogyny is on deck in parliament to be written into law as extremism. Curtailed like in the European Union in general, whose commissioner sent Elon Musk a letter demanding that he comply with their censorship laws on X. Or curtailed like in Brazil, threatening citizens with a $9,000 a day fine if discovered using a VPN to access X after it was banned for too much, what do you think? Free speech. Like the quickly devolving new normal of the United States where Meta CEO formerly complicit Mark Zuckerberg released a letter detailing how the Biden-Harris administration and the FBI worked to censor content related to COVID and Hunter Biden on meta platforms from 2020 to 2022. 
So is speech apolitical? Said like uh, no one ever. Defending the right and attacking the right to say things in particular places will be a continuous battle as long as communists exist. And Bitcoin has been called a weapon. Don't you remember? Like guns, from pistols with reduced magazines to the fantasy term assault weapon. The right to bear arms was written into a list of foundational rights in America, and that has been continually assaulted by those who understand it's easier to oppress a disarmed population. Now, of course, detractors will say Bitcoin is a tool. Tools are not political. And here's a crown for you. That's right. Bitcoin is a tool like a hammer, an axe, a knife, a nail gun. But a nine millimeter is not wrong. Entire countries have used politics to disable citizens from owning these particular tools. I could list the countries, but it's essentially every country in the world, but like three. Amazing freedom that democracy around the world has brought us. Bitcoin adoption is not optional. It's financial gunpowder, said Saifti and Amos in the Bitcoin standard. Even the Manchurian influencer Jason Lowry declared Bitcoin to be a weapon. So much a weapon, he thought Bitcoin's open source nature should be removed and require a license to use. So I digress. Are guns apolitical? Said no one ever. Personal firearms are necessary to guarantee the rights of your property counterbalance to the will of the state. For property rights to truly be protected, your ability to bear arms must be equal to the ability of the state to bring arms against you. For as the US Constitution says, how can a quote, well-regulated militia exist if it's not regulated against the strength of its potential opposition? <laughs> Any F-22s lying around after hyper-Bitcoinization? They've always been a favorite of mine. Now, what about other things out there? My phone, my house, my Pacific Bitcoin 23, Holy of Holies jacket, my car, my YouTube channel, my city hall, my reputation. An important exercise for everyone to master is to identify everything you interact with and define its owner. Not the license to use via terms and conditions, but where you have inalienable rights and access to and control it, assuming you don't infringe on another's respective rights in doing so. So is Bitcoin property? In short, yes. In no digital asset do you have more autonomy and control than that of Bitcoin. However, do governments all over the world have different perspectives and politics on what you can do with your property? Even more so. Property tax means give the state a percentage of your property value every year. Eminent domain means the state has the authority to claim ownership of your property for its own self-defined just causes. Extortion means the state can violate or threaten violence against property owners to execute the will of the state. And the state can raise and lower these levers, especially in domains where individuals can't protect themselves from nefarious, including state actors. So is property political? It goes without saying. The state today literally exists to acquire and absorb more property for themselves and to redistribute to their allies and agents. So Bitcoin is speech, political, a weapon, political, and property, political as well. <laughs> Where the hell did this apolitical stuff come from? Well, it's a pull marketing tactic for Bitcoin vendors. It comes from the hurried desire to sell to a larger or different demographic of people that don't naturally come to the Bitcoin product for its clear use case. I'm Mr. Bitcoin Salesman. Here you go. You will like Bitcoin because we give it a name that is antithetical to its very being. You're welcome. And thank you for the commissions. We have clearly proven that Bitcoin is not actually apolitical. Bitcoin's politics are to maximize one's own individual ability to own one's property and remove any intermediaries to minimize the potential for inefficiencies from rent-seeking bureaucratic grift. Sign me up for that nation because that clearly isn't anywhere you or I live. For speech, Bitcoin can communicate value more efficiently than any network. Peer-to-peer, -peer, no third party necessary. But the truth is, some people just love their intermediaries. 
They need to trust someone else because the sad truth is the validation of their very actions in their eyes comes from someone they see as bigger than them. As a weapon, it's an immensely powerful defensive cryptographic technology. It takes hundreds of thousands of years to brute force hack it. This weapon makes its wielder strong. But the facts of life is that some people hate the idea of themselves and others being able to defend themselves from the government, no matter if they are very evil, kind of evil, or somewhere in between, because that's the entire spectrum. We exist to serve the government and having the ability to defend yourself creates friction in the process of that relationship. As property, Bitcoin enables us to own something outright that an external party must negotiate with us to separate us from it. Bad actors can still threaten you. They can still do that with any property. They can kill you and still acquire it. But with Bitcoin, if you choose to die on that hill, they're shit out of luck. Now, some people do not believe that you have exclusive rights to your property, that a part of all of it should be socialized to the community forcefully. And we call these people socialists and communists, respectively. If you support the native use of Bitcoin, you must also believe in freedom of speech uninhibited by government intervention. If you support the native use of Bitcoin, you must also believe in personal defense rights uninhibited by government intervention. If you support the native use of Bitcoin, you must also believe in property rights uninhibited by government intervention. Anything less is hypocrisy and the government has just as much right to bust your door down if you even think about buying a Satoshi. Now I can clown and bang on people that think they deserve your property for another five to 10 minutes, but they already know who they are and they know what's in their heart. It's dark, it's vile, but it's all under the guise of empathy. Let's spare everyone that buzzword. A few more years of your favorite politicians coming after your Bitcoin and your property, you can finally say enough is enough. I am Sir Ulrich, like my father before me. Bitcoin most certainly helps us navigate a better form of politics than we ever have had before. So